From the Asgard Company Studios in beautiful Wichita Falls, Texas, from the finest mind in the modern fitness industry, the one true voice in the strength and conditioning profession, the most important podcast on the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, starting Strength Radio. Welcome to Starting Strength Radio. We are here on your Friday. And uh, today we are going to eliminate comments from from the the haters haters. because fuck those people. Talk about them later. That's comments Comments from from the the haters. haters. And instead we're going to talk about the latest buzz on the internet. Uh, We're going to talk about... The uh, veg and propaganda film, The Game Changers. Now, this film was released back in January of 2018. And for some reason that I'm not quite sure I understand, uh, Joe Rogan picked it up and uh, started talking about it a couple of months ago. And the thing has just exploded and it's all over the Internet now. Whereas it was safely ignored for, you know, most of a couple of years. But Joe Rogan had had to, you know, come up with uh, uh, a discussion with uh, Chris Cresser uh, about the film, and uh, it's it's worth discussing for one very very important reason. The film is an expensive, beautifully photographed beautifully edited, masterfully directed propaganda film. It, uh, it really is a, it's a, it's an hour and a half long and it is just an amazing movie. Lenny Riefenstahl would have been proud of this movie. And, uh, I am, I'm absolutely comfortable with that analogy. This is Goebbels level propaganda. And we're going to talk about it for a little while here today. And we're going to talk, we're going to use it as a springboard for other discussion. But this, if you haven't seen this movie yet, um, try to watch it. Uh, I would never have watched it if we weren't going to talk about it today because you get about 10 minutes into it and it's so tedious. And there's so many egregious, bald faced lies and factual errors and mischaracterizations, cherry picked data. It is classic propaganda in that sense. So we're going to talk about it today, and with me today are Carlos Santana, Robert Santana. You'd be more useful as a guitarist. Perhaps. I don't know. Did you never play the guitar? Haven't tried. It's a Cuban thing, you know. Maybe I could figure it out. I think you could figure it out in a couple of hours. I think so. I think you ought to try that. That should be your next project. All right. And with us also today is Dr. Steph Bradford, who we pressed into service here because of her credentials and all the good ideas she constantly has, even though she won't come talk to us unless I make her do it. So... You wouldn't let me have my dog in here. Well, you don't need your dog. You can be without your dog for an hour and a half. It's very stressful. I understand. I like him, too. He's a good boy. (laughs) So, uh, we've all watched this movie. We all made ourselves watch this movie. I think uh, uh, Robert uh, watched it more than I did and more than Steph did because Robert... uh, I guess feels guilty, <laughs> feels guilty about stuff, and he's trying to atone for past sins and <laughs> errors and omissions and things like that. But he actually, how many times you watch this damn thing? Uh, like five or six he times. He watched it oh. five or six times. That's that's unnecessary. That's terrible. I was that's looking for a way to speed it up. I fell asleep the first couple times. You in know. my defense. Well, it, I but don't I think watch videos anyway. I, you'll all admit. I think the three of us will admit that it's a a well produced. Oh yeah, it's an expensive, it's an expensive project. Mm. There are twelve executive producers on this thing, all, most of which, from what I understand, have money in the production. 
Uh, and it's uh, there, there are several problems with with that list of people, and we'll we'll get to them eventually. But the the damn thing, the only reason we're going to talk about it is because it's gotten a bunch of a bunch of uh, attention from everybody else, and because it is such a a very well done film that it has the capacity to change people's minds because people watch this and they're persuaded by it despite the fact that it's wall to wall bullshit well that's the whole idea wall right? to wall bullshit i mean you, you but pick, it's it's slick you pick bullshit. i mean a movie you're you're setting up a movie you have individuals that you're focusing on to drive the narrative because that is how you push emotional buttons with people. Yes. So and, you set up. And they do. You set up things. You film certain things certain ways. You bring in experts, right? Yes. Who, no matter what data they're presenting or what claims they're making, it's because they're experts. Most people aren't going to look into it any further than the surface. In fact, they're not going to look into it all. What they're going right. to do is react emotionally, and that's the entire idea of right. producing a film. They're going to react to the color of authority under which the information is presented. And they, they go to great lengths to do this. It's, we'll talk about some of, the, some of the tricks they've used here, but my God, they've done a good job on they really have. So let's let's start with your. I think both of you have some extensive notes here. Let's just go from the top down and and discuss the methods used here. Well, why don't we start by talking about who's narrating the film, right? Right. Because you know he's right. the narrator is supposed to be some sort of expert. Yes. Obviously, he put the film together. He but makes yeah. some he makes some statements yeah. in the film uh, that yeah. make him look really. Oh yeah, dumb. So he, because they're dumb statements. Wilkes. Yeah, James Wilkes. James Wilkes, former UFC fighter. So he was a fighter, and he mm -hmm. coaches Marines, I believe, on how to fight. Military. military. He yeah, he's a military he fighting coach. He teaches people how to fight. Teaches people how to hand to hand fight. combat. So. so then he got injured, and uh, decided that he wanted to do a bunch of research on how to heal up faster. I mean, the real problem here is he's a high level athlete. High level athletes you know, get injured, kind of comes with the territory, yes. <laughs> regardless of what they eat. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, somehow he got into a pile of research that supported plant-based diets. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. That's actually one of the first things that jumps out is plant-based. What is that supposed to mean? That's yeah. never defined. Right. No, at no and point do they... Nearly everyone eats <clears throat> a plant-based diet. Yeah, do they exactly. say the word <laughs> vegan anywhere in this film? I don't think they do. Vegetarian. They say vegetarian. Yeah, yeah. We call them vegans, yeah. not vegans. Yeah. Because <laughs> I can read. <laughs> yeah. Right? And uh, I they've gone to great lengths to... to th this is part of the propaganda. They've cast it as plant-based. Now... Plant-based would mean, I mean, if we're just looking at the normal English definition of that, it would mean that most of your diet is plant. Is, is plants. Mm -hmm. And what do, uh, I mean, just talking about Americans, what do most people eat? A plants. bunch of yeah. carbs. <laughs> yeah. Where do carbs come from? Plants. Potatoes. Plants. <laughs> yeah. In the American eat a bunch diet. of carbs. They Potatoes and corn. Industrial <clears throat> seed oils. That's, uh, yes. and you know. Mm-hmm. That's the basis of the, the diet. Yeah. It's yeah. not, very few people have meat based diets. There are groups that do, and in fact thrive on those mm -hmm. diets. Um, those are never discussed. Not in this film. Not, right. No. Not in this film. I used to work at a dialysis center. And um, for those of you watching that don't know what that is, it's basically an artificial kidney. These guys have to sit on a chair and get their blood clean three times times a week on average some more some because less. their kidneys are have been destroyed for one reason or another yeah so this is an extremely catabolic process and they have to eat lots of protein to avoid atrophy they should be training too but that's a whole nother discussion nah. mm -hmm. so when if i would they were going to train the they wouldn't be in the, yeah, exactly. they were going to train they wouldn't be in the show they would be yeah. well yeah. there's sometimes genetic you know influences there but yeah a lot of them got themselves right. there i would agree with that yes um so when I'd sit there and ask them what they eat or look at what's on their chair because they bring food with them, it's just a lot of junk, high sugar, high fat, you know, and then you tell them to eat meat. They're like, oh, I, you know, I eat chicken. Then I say, well, what part of chicken do you eat? Oh, the wing, which is, you know, purely fat. So getting these people who represent the typical American diet 
whose diet represents a typical American diet, to eat more protein. And by more protein, their guideline is 1.2 grams per kilogram. So that's not even high protein. Just no. to get them to do that was mm-hmm. hard. They said, oh, I, I just don't want to eat meat. And sometimes, you know, they do lose their palate because of the treatment. So there's certainly some of that, too. But a lot of them just eat a lot so of So what you're yeah, saying, yeah. It's, it's a lot of the industrial food, a lot of the snack food, a lot of the portable food, a lot of yeah. a lot of things that everybody pretty much agrees is... Mm-hmm is bad mm-hmm. right well, yeah so if you look across the, diet is don't eat crappy stuff and what yeah. do people eat crappy stuff yeah well right? I don't, but and a lot of this is mm-hmm. it comes from the repeated medical wisdom that mm-hmm. and you'll hear it every time you go to the doctor's office mm-hmm. protein's bad for the kidneys mm-hmm. you know yeah so well, here we are in a in a dialysis center trying to communicate to these people that they need to eat more protein mm-hmm and those people are being monitored, too. I mean, yeah. that's, they're these extensively people, being monitored. They know if things are getting worse or better. These are people whose GFR is not normal, but right. they still need to eat enough protein yeah. to maintain their muscle mass. Yeah. But or on that, the other hand, protein, and, you know, this is mentioned in the film, mm-hmm. that animal protein's bad for the kidneys. Yeah. And so... Well, anyway, yeah. So got, there's this bias. If you eat too much protein, that's somehow the worst thing you can possibly do. It's mm-hmm. it's like it's this anti-protein stance is kind of kind of a, a bizarre thing that you see forever. I mean, just recently I saw, you know, flashing by me on the internet the way it does that um, a diet is considered low carb, you know, by the authorities mm-hmm. if it's um, if it's less than forty five percent carb. <laughs> Where'd you, wait, where, where'd you see that? That's new. It, it was yeah. one of these yeah. newer guidelines, and it might have been from a different country and you know, how those things overlap. So right, right, yeah, yeah. But the, the thing is, and I'm like, are you serious? I'm thinking, how could I possibly eat 45% carb? I'm much more of a right. low-carb kind of person. Yeah. 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 Um, so anyway, James Wilkes. Is a fighter. Is a fighter. And a coach. He hurt his knee. He's laid up. It's both knees, wasn't it? I saw braces on both knees. He had braces on yeah. both. He messed himself up pretty bad. Yeah, he had both his knees. So he decided to sit on the couch for eight weeks because that's what he was told by the doctor. Right. Instead of actually rehabbing his knees, he's going right. to read about vegetables. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> okay, James, <laughs> that is easier than squatting and deadlifting. I understand that. But, uh, the bizarre conclusions that he came to. This is the story that they mm-hmm. tell. That's just right. what holds. This is the the narrative that That's holds. It's the manufactured the film twenty twenty hindsight. Right. Um, that, coherent, self you know identified story. You know. That his mm-hmm. father, who's over seventy, has a heart attack over seventy, which is pretty good since most men start to have them in their fifties. Right. If they're going to have them, they'll if have them. Yeah. In, yeah. In their right. in their fifties. But this must have been the meat consumption. That, that's what to do with him. What else could it be? He's a male over 70. I mean, yeah, you know what that. they say. Yeah. What do they say, Rip? They say well, a lot of they things. Say, they say that eating meat is bad for you. It's bad. It's bad. Yeah. So he had a heart attack, and uh, James rides to the rescue mm-hmm. and puts the old man on the salad diet, mm-hmm. and he's suddenly better. Yeah. I mean, he survived the heart attack. Mm-hmm. So did the meat kill him? Well, I don't, I don't know what his status. <laughs> I don't know what his status is now. Well, now he's a veggie. <coughs> well, so if veg. he dies, do the do the plants kill him? By their logic. Well, see, that's an interesting thing. That's an interesting. <laughs> well, that's, an interesting that's an interesting thing. That's so an interesting aside, point. aside from the, maybe he's immortal. He hasn't died yet. Aside from the idea, look, you guys just on this sidetrack here. Go on. Aside from this whole idea that that it must have been an identifiable thing that caused this problem instead of an ina- interaction of genetics with nutrition. 70 years of being se- alive. 70 yeah. years genetics. Everything else that's going on, we know there's many factors and, you know, who's more predisposed to having any right. kind of cardiovascular event, you know, whether mm-hmm. it's a heart attack, whether it's a stroke. Um, there's all that that history. All this, we, we don't know enough about what actually is... Uh, causative factor in any of that even though some people like to to say we do we don't Mm -hmm. because nutrition science really isn't much of a science we'll we'll talk about that in a second but what's interesting is they'll put that whole history on now that he does something for a short period of time everything's better supposedly well he's changed a bunch of things i guarantee you he's on drugs 
Um, he's probably lost some weight. You know, weight loss changes a lot of stuff. Um, he's probably one of the few people in the demographic that benefits from statins. Mm-hmm. Right. Just on a statistical basis. Yeah. May not. May personally. not. Not personally, right. but statistically. Because it's a, it's a very small right. effect. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so here we have a long period of time. The guy was doing whatever the heck he was doing, and it probably changed over his lifetime. Lifetime, um, and then he changes something. And then we look, we're looking at a, essentially a short-term effect. And when we look at these people in the film, it's the same thing. So here we have people. They didn't develop on this diet. Mm-hmm. They changed the they changed their diet in some way. It's not always clear what all the implication from. They don't specifically say, but it, that it's uh, vegan, right? So they don't say what they started from. Right. Mm-mm. There's no detail where they start from. And there's no detail. Except for the guy that ate a lot of fried chicken. But the, the point is, it's like, so how many other, th- how many <coughs> things changed? Right. Mm-hmm. How did the pro- total protein intake change? How did the carb intake change? Right. How did the total calories in the diet change? What other things in training changed? All those things change, but they're, they're not discussed. They, they try to imply that it's simply a matter of changing out removing animal products removing animal products right and i without it even being said it's it's unlikely that anyone was on a meat-based diet even though they're completely comparing plant-based meat-based plant-based meat-based over and over it's presented as a dichotomy who's on who's on who's on a meat-based diet i don't know what these people are on now there's there's what we call the standard american diet that's essentially horrible Mm -hmm. you know it's 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 promotes disease and it goes along with a sedentary lifestyle so these guys are already outliers in this respect they're probably eating better than that although you don't know because there's a lot of athletes especially when they're young that just they eat so much they eat constantly and they have such good genetics they can get away with stuff that you the fried can't. chicken guy right you know you can these get people are all freak athletes in the movie this cannot oh. be emphasized enough you are not there's nobody in this movie except possibly wilkes's dad Yes. Who is a, not a genetic outlier to begin with? One thing a genetic also outlier said. and and somebody who's exercised in an outlying way, whatever their sport, they've done they they're training in a much different way than everybody else, and God only knows what supplements they're taking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, right. God only knows because it's they're yeah. athletes because they're elite trying, athletes. Yeah. And we know win. what elite athletes right. will do. That's no secret. No. Yeah. And if you. have this is just this is just part of the part of the problem oh. here. They have very carefully constructed this entire narrative to to say one thing and one thing only is that you, the listening audience, you the viewer, need to do exactly what the, these people say they have done. Right? Now, and we don't know what they've done. Well, we don't know what they've done. This is not but we do know that <laughs> what they have done is going to be different than what you have done because that's the point of the whole thing. These people, uh, uh, I, this, is a, this is an interesting little, I, you know, here, here's, a, here's an interesting thing that I noticed. The, the, the minute I saw this thing is the, where they took the blood from the three guys mm-hmm. on the three different meals and spun it down. Now, that is this whole thing in a microcosm. Explain what we saw there. So they were talking about, you know, in general, they were talking about one thing and explaining another. So I'll yeah. go into the specifics there. So they kept throwing around the word endothelial function, knowing that most of the people watching this have no idea what the hell that means. Mm-hmm. So basically what that refers to is how well your arteries function or dilate is what they're typically looking at when they're measuring it mm-hmm. what they measured was oh what, and they had some wonderful animations oh yeah that they spent a bunch of money on so they said okay you know we're looking at it's blood flow that's how they explained it and they're like yeah. we need blood flow to our muscles when we're training you know and when you eat this meat you're going to get an impairment in blood flow because your endothelial function is going to go down so what happens is when you eat a high fat meal ir- irrespective of whether it's meat or oil or whatever when you eat a high fat meal it creates an inflammatory response. Your endothelium becomes more permeable and you get endothelial dysfunction. That happens. Now, how do you measure it? You don't measure it drawing blood. What they were measuring was lipemia, so how much um, triglyceride is circulating in your blood after a high-fat meal. We know that it increases. It's obvious. You just ate a high-fat meal. It's a transient phenomenon. Yeah. Like everything else regarding that. They showed one time point, which is not (coughs) a typical peak. Yep. 
the s- <laughs> single time point. So there's two ways to measure endothelial function. The first way is invasive. You do an angiogram, and you infuse acetylcholine into the coronary arteries, and then you look on the X-ray, and you see how much dilation you get. That's the gold standard right. Right. to measure that. They did not do that. The second way is a way that I'm more familiar with that I was trained on, and that's called flow-mediated dilation. So they'll have you lay down on a, on a bed, and they'll put a blood pressure cuff on your brachial artery, so that's up here on your arm. So they usually put it on the forearm, and there's a bunch of uh, methodological reasons for doing that. But they'll occlude your forearm, and they'll do it rapidly. So instead of like a regular blood pressure cuff where it's real gradual, it just grabs your forearm like in an instant. And they image the brachial artery with an ultrasound transducer, same device they use to look at babies and pregnant women, and they'll image the artery before they occlude it, during, and then after. So then they'll leave the cuff on for five minutes because anything more than five minutes might be influenced by other factors, and then they'll release the cuff and look at how much it dilates from baseline. So when they release a cuff, obviously you get a rush of blood flowing through that's called reactive hyperemia. And the artery is going to dilate above baseline if you're healthy. If you're not, you might not see that. So there were studies done at ASU where they gave them uh, high-fat meals, like a McDonald's Big Breakfast. And you can Google this. I believe the lead author's name was Tucker. And they had them do high-intensity high intensity intervals after they ate this. And what they found was the control group that did nothing, obviously they had the endothelial dysfunction from eating the high-fat meal. And the group that did the intervals, they saw they still saw a reduction below baseline, but not as much, so it attenuated it. So they didn't mention that either. They're saying, oh, we're going to get a restriction in blood f- flow from exercise because these inflammatory foods are going to jack up your endothelium, but then they're also forgetting that exercise attenuates a lot of that too. So if you're training, right. you're not going to get as much. Yeah, well, and the, the, the leukemia too. Which is obvious, yes. Se- Several times in the movie. If you are active after you eat, it's different than sitting on your butt. Yeah. And if you're eating different things, if you're, yeah. you're e- that, that meal had what? It had fat and protein and carbs. Yep. So what happens if you're low carb? Do you get the do you get the same sort of increase, or is it taken up much quicker? Yeah, they. they it's it's, yeah, it's they, taken up. It's yeah. you're you're primed mm-hmm. to take it up. But but what was amazing was, uh, they spin the blood down, mm-hmm. and then they show you the spun down tube. The animation was great, wasn't it? The, the animation was. Expensive blood drop. It, I'm yeah. telling, it was it, this was this is a beautiful movie, but they spin the blood down and then they, what do they do? <clears throat> they show you the clear plasma, not the not versus the, the cloudy plasma. Mm-hmm. There's no numbers. There's no nothing. The what, dirty cloudy is dirty. Cloudy dirty is, is bad. dirty. Mm-hmm. Cloudy is bad. Clear is good. And how do you know that? Well, because it's intuitively obvious. Mm-hmm. It's intuitively obvious. It must be bad. because clear is always better than cloudy. Of course, like, like today. And what? And what happened <laughs> like today? And it's what, a clear why, day. And why would why would you see a difference with the uh, vegan vegan? Excuse me, the vegan uh, burrito versus the ones that had meat in there. I mean, we're just assuming, and this is a huge assumption given the rest of the movie, that there was equivalent amount of fat in all of them. That's well, okay. well what, we're, what but, they're asking you to assume is that the presence of the animal protein clouded the serum, clouded the plasma. That's the the well, absolute conclusion that you are try, you are expected to draw. Right now, what's now? And that is now what's insane. The, what's, what's the difference there? I mean, they they were trying to put they were trying to put avocados as the fat, mm-hmm. right? So that is high oleic acid, whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, various other things, um, but. Uh, that didn't look like a very big serving of avocado. Either. No, it didn't. Oh, I mean, no, you should always have more avocado as far as I'm right. concerned. Yeah. There's but, like a tablespoon so, of guacamole. So what affects, what what affects yeah. the time? They didn't show. They showed a two-hour point. And if you look at studies, normally they do a time course. And the peaks later, and it, it, depending on your the context of the, the person, it's earlier or later for a peak of the fat in your blood after a meal but the fat's going to go in unless you unless you're unless you're shitting it out which is a different problem right but so why would you why are you not seeing the fat in there i don't know maybe it has something to do with the fiber and the time course mm-hmm. going in but because they didn't show you that and two hours is pretty early it's pretty early it's it's probably not peak and it's early it, it and you show one thing. their purposes yeah right so my it point is, if purposes. that meat was 70-30, and they put that little strip of avocado, and if it was guacamole, it's even lower in fat than just straight right, avocado. Right, right. It's like, it's pretty obvious that the fat content is probably not matched, but we don't know that for sure. Just by looking at it, it 
they're probably using 70 30 or 80 20 mm-hmm. you know they didn't mention how lean the meat was or not but the one was well, chicken yeah. Yeah. And one was beef. Yeah, and what they cook it in, what they add to it, Yeah, right? I, you don't, I don't cook know. the avocado, you just put it on there, right? So if they were cooking that meat and oil, you're getting fat there But too. the statement, so, yeah. the statement exactly. was the animal protein clouded the plasma. Mm-hmm. That was the statement. Mm-hmm. So now what mechanism would there be for that to occur? They didn't explain that. Cause they didn't explain <laughs> that because there sense. isn't one. It, so you'd have to. So, but I'm telling this. But you show that to people without any kind of background in any of this, and what are they going to say? Meat is bad. They're going to go. Well, you're you're right. Cloudy is is worse. Than clear, worse. clear is always better. And if this is why I need to quit eating chicken. <laughs> well, the thing. I, <laughs> but but, but, but this know, is the problem that's, with this film. That, that's the a, problem with the film is people, people will believe that. People oh, yeah. will believe that. And you know, the problem too also is another thing. Okay. So what's actually happened over the last several decades with food? Well, the food industry has changed as far as how the industry has provided food. Yeah. People have done what? They have dropped their meat consumption. They have drastically dropped their animal fat consumption. They have drastically increased their seed oil consumption, palm oil, soybean oil, all that kind of stuff, which is no bueno, no good for you, okay? They've increased their refined carbohydrates, they've increased their processed food, they've increased the frequency of eating. And what's happened to people's health? Well, people have gotten you know, much higher prevalence of obesity and diabetes and all these other bad things that are, you know, inflammatory. Remember, mm-hmm. we're concerned about infl- inflammation mm-hmm. with the endothelial function, right? So um, uh, inflammatory and, and lead to these chronic diseases. So you look at a problem, they're focusing on something that a- has been dropping anyway, animal protein. So it's kind of weird yeah. actually to focus on that and ignore everything else. But think about what happened over the, the time course of the government saying, you need to eat low fat, right? Yes. Now, maybe these outliers, these, these elite athletes, people that are super concerned about their health, those people go in and they said, okay, we're gonna have chicken and rice, we're bodybuilders, we're gonna do X, Y, and Z, we'll get our broccoli, include fruits and vegetables, which again, what does that mean, fruits and vegetables? Well, to most people, what it means is grains, mm-hmm. refined uh, flours and sugars snack and bread wells. and pasta. Exactly, that's the, where I was getting, going to. It's exactly wells. where I was going to. What happens when you tell people to eat low fat well, they eat snack wells. Mm-hmm. They eat snack wells. They eat more processed crap. That's where and snack we know, wells came from. And we know that process right out of the brain of Ansel Keys right. is where snack wells came from. And that's a whole nother show, and we ought to do that. Uh, I think so. Well, there's there's right. that, but what it also came out of was the processed food industry. It came out of yes. Monsanto. It came out of ADM, Absolutely. supermarket to the world. Ansel Keys created packaged a market food, for Monsanto. Packaged food has a high margin. It's Absolutely. entirely crowed top to bottom by uh, giant corporations in your government. Yes. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Now, so the thing is, but what, what do ordinary people do? What are ordinary people going to do when if, if they go, hey, I saw clear versus cloudy. Oh, geez, I'm going to ignore everything else. All I'm concerned about is I don't want that. You know, because I, I think it's bad. Plasma. I think no. it's bad. No. What do they no. do? What are they going to do? Are they going to eat, go into the, the uh, produce aisle and, and eat lovely fruits and vegetables that are kale high and in kale, bok choy bell peppers, and artichokes? That's also for some more reasons. expensive, by the way. All, okay. Are they going to eat all these things this, as majority this, thing? Or are they going to eat? This might as well have been an ad for Whole Foods. Or are they going to the, eat? It's an hour and a half long ad for Whole or, Foods. Or are they going to? Or are they going to eat more shit? And the answer is they're going to eat more shit. Mm-hmm. And they're going to go and they're going to buy disgusting, uh, manufactured, pretend, packs. pretend uh, meat products. Yes, you know, fake meat. things and made out of soy-based hamburgers. That's sort of textured vegetable protein. Now. All have you these had things. one of those? No, have you? No, and I'm not going to. <laughs> yeah, they're going to eat. They're going to eat more. And you know what? Neither is anybody else. It's possible. <laughs> they're going to eat more manufactured, controlled things that have a huge amount of money to the people producing Fake food. them. Fake food. Fake food. Yeah, but what what do we actually know? Now, nutrition science is not really science. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. We can talk about that yes. in just a second. But what do we know for sure? We know processed. Everyone, like guys, come on. Nasty processed food is not good. 
a bunch of unnatural yes. food is Nobody's not good. And that. this is just more unnatural food. Look, soy Pea milk. protein is boys really and girls, bizarre. Soy milk is coffee mate. Okay? <laughs> Don't use coffee mate. Silk. Silk. It, yeah, it's, it's a brand that's pretty awful. Oh, it's, it's <laughs> how that is. That's you see people women. in Whole Foods buying this almond milk and all this. I thought you guys were natural eaters. Do you not understand what soy milk is? Dude, almonds have tits. Yeah, it's well, it's 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 it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a serious appropriation shit. to apply milk. Yes. Yeah. To a non-mammal. To a non-mammal thing, it's true. Yeah. Right. Milk comes from mammals. But almond juice. Almond juice, if you make it yourself, is is good, but but what you buy in a store Letting is them trash. Do it. Oh, yeah. So they, they want us to start eating kibble, it. Rip. That's what it sounds like to me. They, they would prefer that. They yeah. prefer that, like yeah. like commercial dog yeah, food. Like it's equivalent. Interestingly, yeah. Soylent green is. Interestingly, I just told Rip I got her off after like a month. I'm like, I'm not doing it. The um the interestingly uh it's a big it's a big thing for dogs have been having a lot of dilated cardiomyopathy. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, and it seems to be associated there, you know, they're looking at this, it, it tracks with putting in a lot of foods that dogs don't normally eat a whole lot of, you know, like lentils, mm-hmm. right? So there's a lot of anti-nutrients in plants <laughs> yeah. and apparently dogs are sensitive enough to it in this context. They don't, they haven't well, figured this let's, out. Let's you know how it takes a while to do. this anti-nutrients in plants thing in mind as we further go through our little outline of the movie here, because that's a, this is an extremely important point. Uh, more people are allergic to plant stuff than mm-hmm. animal stuff. Mm-hmm. Want us to eat kibble? They would. They would prefer that we ate kibble See because that. they can control everything that goes into. They'll it. They'll call it something else, though. Yeah, yeah. It's corn, soylent green. Yeah, silk, <laughs> which See, is made of people. But see, it's a, it's but a <laughs> soylent red. Was you don't even know what I'm talking about? No. Oh, you, you haven't don't seen know? the movie? Which movie? Soylent green. No. Watch the movie. It's all cannibalism. Watch the movie. It's it's the end point of this whole thing. What Watch year did this well, come movie. out? Oh, oh this would have been early 70s. Charlton Heston. Oh, that was, yeah. yeah. It was when Charlton Heston was making uh, science fiction movies back then. <laughs> he needed the money. But it was a great film. Yeah. It's a great film. Okay. You you need to watch it. I'll watch because it. Because it's... Soylent it's, Green. It's, it's incredibly prescient. Watch Soylent. Green. So yeah, so you'll notice all these these things you know that keep recurring on our consciousness and our movies and things like that. Um, they're uh, they're they're testing, <laughs> they're test they're test placement. Thing, you know, th- on these. It's things. a trial balloon. It's a trial balloon. Yeah, it's right. like they think they're good ideas, right? <laughs> so I mean, what's the thing is all this processed food is very much controlled. I mean, I think and I think that's one of the reasons they are so anti the beef industry. Even though here we have, you know, animals that are out in the sunshine eating grass, using land that's not usable for crops, you know, right? Producing meat and it's not under the control of big corporations. Right. They prefer yeah, you yeah. to be on a prescribed diet that they entirely control. At the same time that you now think about people you know. At the same time that most people have about zero food supplies in their house. What does, what kind of situation does that create? They have the right. food. You don't have the food. It's not a good situation. Right. Not everybody has three freezers like we do. No. So you know we're, we're or if, grass if you have a, and cows. If you like have a chest do, deep freeze, right? you suddenly become independent of the grocery store. Okay. This is and th- those of you that that are interested in this need to to watch our beef industry podcast again. Uh, Richard made a very good point. He said that. Uh, 80% of the cattle in the United States, the national herd, are in groups of 30 or fewer. Mm-hmm. It's it's still basically a local industry. Now, there are exceptions, like right. Timmerman is, is an exception, but most of the cattle in the country are held by individuals. And as a result, individuals are still in control of that market. And the you know, they would rather that you believed that cattle are industrially farmed because that's the way they'd like them to be. But the sustainability. But they're not. So, you know, and, and you right. know, you just put a cow out in your yard and they just take care of themselves. In fact, a funny story. Um, 
person I know. She happens to be from Queens. Um, she was asking me about, well, when you're out of town, who takes care of your cows? And it's like, uh, well, they're just standing out there doing cow stuff. You know, eating. <laughs> well, that's what cows do. They eat. Cows, cows are pretty good. They swat flies. <laughs> they poop. They pee. If they see something yours, they try to smash into it to scratch and, and destroy it. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's what what they a life. Do. They run around. Oh, look at this trailer. <laughs> that's what they do. It's like, well, yeah, well they just, they're just look at out this there. Fence. I think I'll push that back. <laughs> and she's like, so you don't have to do anything to them? I'm like, no. We don't, you don't have to feed them. You don't have to give them water. Uh, you don't have to give them any kind of, ours don't have any kind of like drugs or anything. They're just out there. Growing, around, turning grass into meat. Eating grass. That we can't eat, you know, grass that we can't turn into well, anything. they're just the middle in the mud. They're just the middle. They're just the middle. But they're just the middle. They're phenomenal. The <laughs> middle one are really good because I can't eat grass. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the only thing that grows, by oh, the way, in North Texas is grass. Mm -hmm. we, our place is just native grass, mm -hmm. mesquite, which is not native and shouldn't be up here at all, and prickly pear. Now, you yeah. can eat prickly pear, but you have it's, to really it, want to. It's you got to be real damn hungry. you got to have used up all of the grass before you're going to eat yeah, prickly pear. Yeah, prickly pear. But, mm. it, you know, in droughts, that happens. But, <laughs> but they they make the point over and over again in this. I can't remember how many times they said this. What, what cattle or cows are just the middle. Animals, they're great. They're just the middlemen. Do you idiots? <laughs> not understand that you have to have a middleman between grass and mesquite beans and eating something because we can't eat that do you see when, when you hear this this doo-doo think please when you hear that gorillas are the strongest animals <laughs> on earth and some idiot in this film makes the point <laughs> that gorillas don't eat meat. It's cool. Then not a then gorilla. <laughs> it's I, I do I need really to explain to you that gorillas have a different <laughs> digestive system than we do. Do I actually need to point out the fact that in in some instances gorillas do eat meat? Chimpanzees do eat meat on occasion. But even if they didn't, their gut is different than our gut. They can manufacture amino acids that we can't. So g gorillas are not like us. <laughs> in in okay. a few important ways. Neither in are, it's several few, important few ways. Important. Gorillas are, are not like us. Neither are oxes. No. Oxes, oh, no. oxes are strong and they, oxen, they don't eat meat. Mm. I, I cannot believe. Well, I don't have the genetics that, for that. Well, Santana. but I can, I can believe it really because don't. These, don't the people in this film over and over and over again demonstrate their absolute lack of respect for the intelligence of the audience. Yeah. Don't don't be stupid. Okay. Well, Any, I mean you have anyway. statements, like I said, you have statements from the narrator that are just, you know, indicate that he didn't get past like second grade biology. Because mm -hmm. he didn't know like like about plants and amino acids, you know. He thought mm -hmm. there's just appeared whole cloth and animals somehow. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> Yeah. And there's other ones like that where you're like, you know, well, I, I can't think of anything to eat that's vegan except a burrito. It's like. And then he's like. Really? <laughs> How can they. Are you being serious? Meat? What was. Do they think that that flour tortilla was. Vegan. Oh, yeah. I guess they did. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No lard in that. Huh? No. No. <laughs> okay. So. Anyway, it's like, <laughs> moving along through the film, wow, what else stood out in in terms of just the 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 grandiose nature of this propaganda? Well, let's talk about their sample of subjects. You know, mm -hmm. They chose predominantly elite level athletes. Yeah, who are going to be bad motherfuckers no matter what. They're That's they're right. already well, the, the yeah. training history too. Yeah, you know, so metabolically yeah. they ought to be in good shape. They're yeah. they're a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Elite athletes are different in several different ways. Mm -hmm. Psychologically, every one of them is suffering from Crazy. some degree of obsessive compulsive yeah, disorder. Yeah, yeah. Psychologically, mm -hmm. because 
that's how you get to be elite, right? Yeah. Genetically, in terms of physiology, they're they're superior in that. Now I don't know about the the track cyclist girl, but I, all those other people have got a, a plus forty vertical, plus thirty inch vertical mm-hmm. jumps. These are all explosive, talented, physically physical geniuses. So or they we, wouldn't have been on the show. So what do we have? We had an ultra distance. Marathon runner. We got an ultra distance marathon. A track runner. cyclist, Olympian, <clears throat> uh, Olympic weightlifter, a boxer, mm-hmm. NFL football player, uh, bodybuilder. Mm-hmm. Am I missing one? I feel like I'm missing one. Oh, there's 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 several you're missing, but a it's, fighter, UFC fighter. But they're uh, yeah. the uh, and they're all performing at the highest of levels. At least they were at one time. Yeah. Well, the argument was supposedly that the performance was better, but I didn't see a lot of quantitation of that. Well, here, th- th- there were several things that they omitted. All right. Okay. Our friend Stan Efferding sends me a list. Uh-huh. Uh, Thanks, Stan. Yep. Th- the following people were either stopped, this veganism shit, or uh, before it was too late, or got out of the sport. Subsequent to becoming vegans, hmm. Tim Schiff, Andrew Luck, C.C. Sabathia, Novak Djokovic, Laurie Markkanen, Kyrie Irving, Morgan Mitchell, Demarcus Cousins, Derek Morgan. All these people are injured. Mm-hmm. Subsequent to becoming vegans. Well, and that. All right. That, 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 Nate Diaz, uh, who actually is not a veggie, he eats fish and eggs. Kendrick Ferris. Kendrick Ferris was in the movie. Oh, yeah. Kendrick Ferris, that's an interesting case. Kendrick became a veggie, mm-hmm. was a veggie for a couple of years, mm-hmm. and then stopped weightlifting. <laughs> now, now, I'm not. Look, I'm, I, and there's more people on this list, probably that many again, but let's just. I'm not going to commit the the error that they do. I don't know for sure that the reason these people were injured and dropped out of the sport is because they became a vegan. All elite. right? They're elite. Everybody has a lifespan. Everybody gets out of the sport, okay? But to say that they thrived because of veganism it's just that's just wrong that's absolutely wrong but that didn't keep him from saying that now did it no and then and even when when things weren't said they were they were implied so you're supposed to take home that message yeah and again the you know, implication our, part is what this film is good at so we're beautiful i can't emphasize this enough and, this and is a very persuasive product i don't Without think anybody developed yeah, right. I don't think anybody um, actually went through development and um, th- their whole career under these conditions, right? They were all people who were already established, like, oh, we're going to change this and see what happens. And it's like, okay, so now you're Maybe. probably doing a lot of things that are different. I mean, what happens when somebody, just just an ordinary person, starts a diet? All of a sudden, they start paying attention to what well, they're the doing. Well, the runner may have, I think. I think okay. he may have been on it, but... Ultra he was on. Yeah. He was but, on for a longer period of time, yeah, yeah. for but, sure. But that's. But I don't know the runner started, brings yeah. up an interesting question here. Ultra what, distance too. What? Yeah, yeah. What percentage of people in any one of these sports is vegan? What does everybody else, all the other world champions and world record holders, doing in these sports? Let's bring up. Well, yeah. they're not. They're not vegans. No. They're eating meat. Yep. Uh, the, the only takeaway point here that you could possibly logically make is that some people are doing well on a vegan diet, but far more people are not eating a vegan diet and doing well too. What an interesting conclusion that the viewer is supposed to draw here. Well, and I think you we know? should talk about our experience with actually training people and yes. what happens when they stop, uh, when they when they change their diets, okay? And they can change their diets in different ways. They can get more calories or less, more carbs, less carbs, more protein, less protein. The uh, animal versus plant for the protein is, a, is another issue. 
right? But um, what have we actually seen in practice? You know, what have you yeah. seen with your clients? Well, you kind of led positive or negative. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of led me into kind of where we're going here. So, I think there's a bigger point to be drawn here because my first pass at this movie, when I was done watching it, I was like. Well, they're stating the obvious and spinning it to something else. Right. And right. the obvious is that all of us, most people, primarily eat mostly plant-based foods. Plant-based, right? Yeah. Because Unless, protein's more expensive. Except yeah. for people that are. Because meat's more expensive. Yeah. Except for people who are using yeah. keto because they exactly. feel better on keto, especially all these people with autoimmune problems. Yep, yep. And, and things like Epilepsy. that. And there's a huge amount of people that do. Yeah. And that prefer it. But middle of the bell curve. Yeah. You know. Uh, what did I say most in my article? People. Assuming normal physiology, mm-hmm. no no craziness going on. Most people eat a mixed diet. That's mostly right. high in products that come from plants. Right. Everyone's <laughs> eating. A, everyone except for a few people deliberately yeah. doing it are eating yeah. a plant based diet yeah. already. And that's why it's so false to sit there and go plant based, plant based, plant based. It's like, dude, we're not eating. We're eating a plant based diet. Right. If if we're eating fifty five percent of our caloric intake from plants. Is that a plant-based diet? I would say it probably is. Well, it's probably I mean, you could you could say there's a there's a percentage of which it's plant-based, but if the majority of your calories that was are coming from means. plants, I would yeah. infer that that would be. But they deliberately do not define it this way because when they say plant-based in this film, mm-hmm. what they're saying is vegan. They don't want to call and it not that. Just they that. don't want to call it that because it's a trigger word for some people, exactly. apparently. And not just that. And they can't saying, say carb either. They think plant-based equals, they want you to say, think plant-based, good. Meat-based, bad. Meat, bad. Meat, protein, bad. Dichotomous, Animals, bad. Yeah. Bad, 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 bad. Because, so of the, trying to because, the, because the plasma was clear on plant-based and clears better than plant. At that time point. <laughs> under those conditions. Anytime. Just back to that. Anytime you eat something that has, has fat in it, you're going to get cloudiness. <laughs> that Your triglycerides well, yeah, That's not yes, what, yeah. that's Duh. not, that's a, that's a detail. Yeah. That we can't worry about. That, 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 all right. We're, we're past that. Let's we're, pa- yeah. we're past <laughs> that. We can't worry about those details. All Everybody right? else has we done that for us. We can't worry about the details that are, that, that are, that are, that are, come right along with eating, that every meal Produces transient effects. Every meal produces transient effects. Mm-hmm. That's why we eat them for mm-hmm. the transient effects they produce, right? Right. Yeah. That's why we have three or four meals a day because we want to be full. We're hungry now. We want to be full. Transient effect. Well, there's transient effects besides the way you perceive the effect, the satiety from the meal. Mm-hmm. It does things to your blood, right? And this afternoon, we watched a movie that showed you one of those transient effects. Mm-hmm. Only one of them. Mm-hmm. In a particular context. In a, per- in a very particular context. So there's a difference, like, like I said, there's a difference if you eat and then you go out in the neighborhood and you walk around. You're going to get a different time course in your blood because what happens if you're actively using the things that you ate as they're entering your blood, mm-hmm. you don't get the same higher levels. I Remember Stan's advice? Walk 10 minutes yeah, after every yeah, yeah. meal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. After every meal, it mediates makes, makes sense. some of these effects. It makes damn good sense. Yeah, makes sense. He's right. a sharp guy. So the uh, star of the movie seems to be this Patrick Baboomian guy. All right. He is 5'7", uh, which means he's shorter than I am, if that's possible. He weighs 256. Okay. Rogan. <laughs> he's uh, very short. Rogan's short, too. Is Rogan shorter than me? Oh, he's a midget. How tall is Rogan? You know how a Smurf is three apples high? Right. A Smurf is like five Rogans tall. Oh, God. I didn't know that. He isn't. Now, now, now so, he'll, maybe he'll quit calling now. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. He, 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 he calls you? He calls oh, Have I ruined oh, things for right you? Oh, wait, have I ruined things or have I made them better? I don't know. Do you want me to get rid of him? I, Let me ask you. I've tried Next. to get him to quit calling. He won't quit calling me. He calls in the middle. Of, I mean, he's I'd calling be, you right now. I'd be in the bathroom, be washing my face, be at I could lunch, probably, look, eating a now. bean burrito. He Is he calling you too? I'm here. <laughs> I could probably get rid of him. I mean, he calls. Him. It seems like he calls every time we're shooting one of these things. But uh, 
I think we have somebody like you know, there's, no, all, there's all, this, look, all this surveillance look, that's going I'm tired on in of giving, this country. I don't there's need, a FISA warrant on here. I don't need to be giving him. Rogan any more publicity than we already do. I'm already responsible for the number of views that his that his podcast gets. So I'm not gonna not gonna keep plugging him. All right. So Baboomian five seven. Baboomian. He he's five seven, about two fifty. Uh, something like that. He's a he's a big strong guy. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's no doubt he's a big strong guy, but he's not a professional strong man. He never has been a professional strong man, and uh, he's at five seven. I mean, this is a this is a sport for people who are a foot taller than that. Mm-hmm. You know, the best professional strong men are at least six four. They're just not because it's a big man's game, and Bamumian. Uh, was apparently has been the beneficiary of this movie. He's become quite. I mean, if you 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 just looked up Yoke Walk a while back, and he's Bob the Bob first Bob, one that comes up. Yeah. Now that is a direct result of this film. Oh yeah, this is a very important movie Google for a lot of things yeah. for a lot of people, and that's why we're talking about it today. Uh, the just so the audience will know the record Yoke Walk is. Up in the fifteen hundred pounds, it's not where Baboomian was doing his, and uh, I, you know, I, uh, a lot has been made of of this guy, and uh, I'm I'm real proud for him for for what he's accomplished. But here's an interesting place to to discuss the commercial effects of this movie. It's, it's interesting that Arnold, in the movie, makes the comment that Burger King and Arby's and all of these places that, that sell sandwiches that have meat on them mm-hmm. have marketed their products as for men, right? Men eat meat. Meat's for men. Whatever they say. Steak is Steak. for men. And he says that this is marketing, not reality. Now, what is this movie? All right. Do you know that the, the primary executive producer of this film, James Cameron, is heavily invested in a pea protein company? Ingredion. Ingredion. And that Patrick Baboomian... Takes a lot of pea protein every day. What I wonder how many total calories. See, we're, he says he gets all the protein he needs from a plant-based diet. Mm-hmm. Or you if mean you're eating veggie. nine thousand calories of plant-based diet a day, French fries and, is a- and a huge part of that is pea protein. Then yeah, I guess you could probably get two hundred and fifty grams of protein a day. Okay, and that would account for Mr. Baboumian's appearance in the film as well. Uh, the guy eats a lot of food. You don't get that big by not by eating salads and, and bok choy. And remember, right? fr- French fries are a vegetable. French yeah, fries so, are yeah, a vegetable. Normally people, when they, you say fruits and vegetables, they think, you know, your produce aisle. Mm-hmm. But, they think the produce aisle in this movie but what at people, Whole Foods. What people actually eat is potatoes and corn and rice. And chips and, and, yeah. and yes, peas. English peas, beans. Well, yeah, beans. They eat beans, which are all, they're all high. They're all very high carb foods. Yes, beans are high carb foods. When the government of the United States says meats and beans without a comma, <laughs> right? They're like they're equivalent. They're or completely they're different. not the same thing. Okay, you need to know that when you hear meats and beans. <laughs> well, they're like well, you they're, might as well be saying well, they're like they're not a starchy vegetable. Fish and flowers. A, you know, you know, they're not they're not the same thing. They're they're primarily a starchy food. Mm-hmm. That's that's why they make you fart. But they're high in protein. High in protein. They're not. They're high, high in protein, protein compared to, compared to uh, certain uh, other things that are. They're very high in protein, protein, protein compared to toilet paper. Okay, <laughs> but they're not high in protein relative to meat. Obviously, toilet paper's high in fiber. Though. Obviously oh, yes, not. Okay, obviously not. So. The commercial interests here, uh, I, I just find it 
incredibly hypocritical that we're we're being told that the the fast food industry is selling us meat and it's just marketing but this film is not selling vegetables or pea protein it's no it's well there's there's another very false thing too very false thing is um where do those restaurants make their money where, where does fast food make their money? They make their money by all the fillers. They make their money. They make their money. Big off margin of on the Coke. The Cokes. Mm-hmm. Right? The drink machine makes the margin. The, but, but, but beyond that, the French fries, the, the buns, French all fries. the cheap stuff. The meat's the only thing in there that's actually of any Crystal, decent quality. Any value. The best quality the bread, is, is the fries, and, the Cokes. And it's the only thing. The, the meat is the only thing they give you the serving size on, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's not for your benefit either, <laughs> right? So that they can control their cost, right? Right. Quarter right. pounder, fourteen ounce ribeye. They always give you the serving size of the meat. Always limiting the but meat not the because other stuff. the meat costs right. money, but the meat is providing the nutritional value there. As far as like you know the protein, you're not. I mean, you're just filling up in a French fries. What are you getting? Well, you're getting a bunch of crap, especially since they switched over to seed oils from beef tallow when French fries actually used to be good. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, seed oils. Let's talk about this. Seed oils are an important mm-hmm. uh, development over the past 40 years. They are the direct result of our friend Ansel Keys telling everybody that, 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 that animal fat causes heart disease mm-hmm. and cholesterol causes heart disease. Seed oils don't have any animal fat or cholesterol in them, but seed oils are an interesting example of the effects that a lot of vegetables have that meats and animal products do not have. So let's just start with let's just start with something that should all, should everyone should think about because a lot of these things are, you know, hey, there's when you talk about nutrition science, you're just talking about observational stuff, self-reported data. It's crap. But there are some things you do know. Just consider that this is completely artificial and really weird. There's really not a lot of oil in any of these things that are, you know, there, how much oil is in corn? There's Tiny not, bit. Not much. And how much corn oil comes out? You have a to lot. squeeze a whole bunch of corn to get a little bit of corn oil. Right. So it's a highly industrialized process. It's very weird. It's very recently introduced into the diets. So it's a huge shift in diet. And, you know, those are things we need to be cautious about. Not not things like meat that we've been eating since the dawn of time. Well, seed oils are pro-inflammatory. I think that's where you were going, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Seed oils are pro-inflammatory, but a lot of plants. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are allergic to a lot of plant-based things because lots and lots of plants don't want you to eat them. Peanuts, mm-hmm. wheat. Well, yeah. it, what, what I'm saying is, is, yeah. is they have plants, bunch of have, and plants have involved, and... plants have evolved toxins mm-hmm. in a lot of instances Absolutely. a lot of plants are toxic because there that's a reproductive mechanism to discourage the the consumption of the plant by animals so that the plant can get to reproduction age and seed out and and reproduce and then with the seeds also to be protect, protected if they are ingested mm-hmm. Right, so you want to you right. want to make it so the seeds reproduce. So you have these seeds actually have some of the highest concentrations of some of these things that we react to, like the lectins. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So it, it's the kind of thing where we know right. animals fight you up front, plants fight you at the back, mm-hmm. um, and animals don't actively just, want to be eaten. No, but once you <laughs> right, mm-hmm. but once you kill them, they're relatively their meat is relatively benign. Yeah, that's true right. as long as you leave out the. <clears throat> restaurant at the end of the universe so, where they did but, want you to eat them. So what about the claim in the movie, prominently toward the end of the movie, that eating meat causes cancer? Oh, yeah. They, what, what, <laughs> when they were talking about uh, nitrosamines and um, oh, heterocyclic okay. amines and right. all that fun stuff, they completely left out cooking method, preparation method. You know, they're just like meat in and of itself causes cancer, which is a bold statement to make because – Let's just get this out of the way here since we haven't said it, and I've said it in other podcasts and papers, et cetera. Mm-hmm. We don't know what the hell people are eating. We have no way to measure intake, yet we're draw- is, deriving conclusions from right. decades-old research of what people say they eat. Decades-old right. research that is bad data. And nutrition, that- nutrition science is, by and large, complete bullshit human nutrition science human yeah. nutrition yeah, human, science yeah. it's on par with 
exercise things. It's, <laughs> by and so, large, uh, it's complete <laughs> bullshit. Now, in, in nutrition science defense, animal nutrition science yeah. is a relatively precise, mm -hmm. because there's so much money invested in this. Yep. I mean, uh, these people that feed pigs, mm -hmm. that, that take baby pigs and turn them into pork, know exactly what they're doing. It's, it's a horrible industry, but in, in terms of the data, they have this dialed in. They know exactly how much to feed a pig to make the most amount of meat on the pig. And that's on both sides. So they, they know from feeding the pigs, and they know because they're controlling the genetics of the pigs. Mm -hmm. So it's a completely different situation than humans. Yes. Now, what we do know about humans, because you know how some people are, they're going to say, well, why would people lie on self-reported? Okay, first of all, there's memory issues. And second of all, we know that when you get when you get a new client in, they immediately start changing their behaviors mm -hmm. and reinventing what they did for the weeks prior. What when they when they take, you know, overweight people and they say, Well, I don't really eat anything. Well, what we see is that consistently people that are overweight think they eat a lot less than they actually do mm -hmm. once you actually box them in. Guess what happens with people that are underweight? They think they're eating a lot more than they actually oh, I, are. Just, I eat so much food. What'd you have for breakfast today? Well, I didn't have breakfast. But I went out. Yeah. Pop tart, you know. Yeah. But yeah. man, last night, oh God, I went. I had a I steak buffet, last night. Yeah. Well, what'd you have with the steak? Well, a potato. Well, well, what else? Well, that's all. I got full. Well, they put cream cheese on it. Yeah, so so the thing is, so I went we to the know. Buffet with my friend on Saturday. <laughs> I'll say that. Well, that was no, that was Saturday three weeks ago. Shit. Yeah, we've yeah. all heard it. So yeah, those, yeah. So those things we know that. So we know that people that are not trying to be. It takes a very little motivation for people to start to reinventing what happened to them, reinventing their narrative mm -hmm. and why things are, and then the memory just you know memory all sorts of problems. Huge. With memory. That's why we make you write down what you do for your training, you know, is <laughs> because mm -hmm. you, you can't remember what you did months and months ago, except in a very general sense. Yeah. So it training log is important. A nutrition log really helps people um, control what they're eating, but they actually see what they're eating, and they're usually surprised because they're not actually looking at the calories. Well, it's a lot not looking at the macros. The problem with nutrition is it's a lot more to keep track of over a longer time period. So yes. what, you're up 16 hours versus three or four exercises in a one to right. two hour training session. So right. there's a lot of recall bias is very real. Right, and Especially you'll leave out that Coke you swung by. Oh, shit, uh, I got to run out the door. McDonald's. Oh, gone, yeah. right? You, you'll leave out that double caramel macchiata that you paid for, you know, it, it, or you get or a little bite of this, a bite of that. When or you the whiskey or yeah. the beer. You the, know, well, they'll include the beer. They'll exclude the liquor. That's something well, they don't want you to know about yeah. the liquor. Or why? Because not it's everybody. Clear. It doesn't people count. It's people like will lie to themselves yes. on a food log and even in an exercise log. Mm -hmm. People will lie to themselves. And the, the, the conclusion here is that if it is self-reported, if the data is self-reported, it's bullshit. And I'm sorry, it just is bullshit. Mm -hmm. You guys need to figure this out, okay? It's bullshit. Yeah. And, and, and any study that was done, that was conducted about anything that has self-reported data, mm -hmm. It's bullshit. It's and bullshit. then, and then, when you look at you look at things where there are more controlled, what <coughs> what's the problem there? They're too short. It's too short. It's super short term. What does nutrition matter for? The long term. Mm -hmm. So you take little things where you give somebody just one single meal and measure a single time point, like was done in the movie. It's like, well, you didn't even look at the time course for that meal, but you're looking at a very acute event in a very specific context, and it's it's just reduced to meaninglessness. So all these are very short, and we're not going to get we're not going to get good data on humans. Not till they put enough of us in the FEMA camps. You know, <laughs> the, the, the best thing we have is that those prison studies in the late '60s. Remember those? Let's well, see. That's yeah. along yeah. the same lines. Yeah, same deal. That was, was that? Yeah. The, that Where was they're the, controlling you. And, but now we can't do that. <clears throat> we have to respect our prisoners. We can't do that type of research anymore. When they are controlling you, mm -hmm. then. You may get some data. Mm -hmm. If the people controlling you gave enough of a damn about it to write it down. But if you are recording your own data about what you ate and what you did, it's going to be wrong. It's just going to be wrong. There have actually been good studies done on how wrong self-reported data is. Mm -hmm. Yet the entire corpus of nutrition science remains predicated on self-reported data. Now that's weird. It's weird that we That's call it nutrition weird. science. Right. 
That's what's weird. Nutrition history would be better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Human nutrition. Nutrition, nutrition uh, novels. Nutrition novels, fiction. Nutrition short fiction. stories. Short stories. Yeah. Yeah. Nutrition yeah, short yeah. stories. Yeah. Right. Nutrition movies. Nutrition narratives. Nutrition bullshit. No, we can't say that. That's too offensive. All right. Yeah, that's we, why we're left for, in a practical matter is some common sense stuff of avoiding things that everyone agrees are problematic. And yet we keep using more of. Isn't that interesting? Like the pr processed foods, industrial foods, the high carb, the, the high sugar, you know, high salt packaged things, eating all the time. All of that, it's like that's exactly what we know is bad. And it seems like people can't get away from it. So, Robert, the what is wrong with nutrition science? You've had some experience with this recently. Well, other than what we just talked about, the fact that we have no way to measure intake, so it's just, you know, it's almost a pseudoscience. It's kind of, I mean, you might as well call I it that. I think it's a pseudoscience. Yeah. I believe that that yeah. is it's, absolutely it's accurate. The, it's the cousin of epidemiology, you know, so. But, uh, yeah, the biggest problem is that, you know, you go in and they're looking at these, you know, they're trying to look at one single variable, like they'll look at, like, almonds, or they'll look at, you know, uh, some other type of individual food. Mm -hmm. Then they'll gather a bunch of self-reported data, not see what the hell these other these people are doing outside of the lab, and then draw conclusions from it. So you know they could submit their tenure packet, get their promotion, and uh, have another pub on their CV. So right. the motivation, a lot of the time, unfortunately, is not purely to you know answer questions. It's more to you know. Keep it's a job. It's a job. It's, yeah. a job. Yeah. It's, it's professional research. It's yeah. not science. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's subsidized by the government. Right. Subsidized by a lot of corporations, depending on the specific area. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Um, well, anytime we're publishing, anytime we're publishing master's theses, mm -hmm. and the corpus of the literature consists of published master's theses, mm -hmm. like it does with exercise science. Mm -hmm. This is fourth tier shit. Mm -hmm. This is fourth tier shit. This is these are fourth tier journals that are publishing this shit. That that respected scientific publications wouldn't touch with a hundred foot piece of hose. Yet here it is in the literature. Well, even stuff that isn't master's theses. I mean, you, you got to understand what is a PI. They're basically a project manager. They're not like in there conducting the research, doing the work. They have master students, doctoral students working doing, for them. Well, they're out, you know, writing bullshit, you know, chasing it, grants, creating stories to get funded by the government. Essentially, they, mm -hmm. primarily, they, they the are government. salesmen, salesmen with very high vocabularies, very extensive <laughs> vocabularies. They're no different than the guy in the car a lot, except they have more words behind them, right? right? And they write it down, right? You know, they speak it too at events, but most of it's written down. They're trying to get money to fund these projects that are being carried out by oftentimes unqualified personnel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, they'll get a big enough grant, they'll hire people out, but still, it's usually predominantly students because, you know. Why would they spend the money if they didn't need it? Exactly. They have free labor, despite right. the fact that, that labor needs to be trained, and there's going to be mistakes made, right? Mm -hmm. And the people that kind of survive through that shit are people that are very good at hiding it. That's something I wasn't very good at. I fuck right. up. You know I fucked up. <laughs> but some, the person down the other side of the lab fucks up, you know, she, she puts a little sprinkle of this, sprinkle of that, nobody knows. Right? Oh, there's, right. a, there's a whole lot of falsification that goes on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're anybody that's interested in this needs to read Bruce Charlton's yeah. book uh, about it. It's a, it's a, a big— Not even trying. Not, not even, even trying. trying. It's a very eye-opening treatise on this— extremely important problem those of you who think it's the science like our little friend Greta Thunberg keeps talking about the science it's not the science well I mean it's become just it's a, not, a bureaucracy not, it's mm -hmm. it's it's an and once occupation. that happens yeah it's an occupation just like any other occupation and as with any other occupation there's the majority of it is bullshit I'm sorry but that's true that's true. And and most of the things that are supposed to be part of science, like the replication, they just, they don't happen. They don't happen. And when they do happen. And it's not even worried about. Well, and when they do, when it does well, it has happen, to be novel. you find out that it doesn't work. Mm. Well, it doesn't matter. You can be, I can't tell you how many times I was doing some sort of experiment and, you know, you're going to use this kind of model system, whatever you're doing, and you, you pull up papers and you read through what they did and you 
okay and you, you you do everything you can to make it just like they did it so i mean okay this was you know this was you know fetal bone marrow serum it was from sigma I pull it, you buy it from the same suppliers and it, it doesn't work and then you try it like three or four different times you can't get it to work so then you you call up the other lab and you're like you know you're trying to figure out how they did it there must be something that's not in the paper so very often there's things that are not in the paper that you're supposed to do to do the experiment and uh even with that um, really what you usually need to do is you usually end up having to go to the other person's lab and have them someone show you exactly what they did. Exactly actually they walk did. you through it in their presence. Exactly. Actually walk through it. And even when you do that, you'll have it like, well, it didn't work this day. That's why you have the positive negative controls. But you don't know why it didn't work. You just know it didn't work. Something was wrong with it this day because the positive control didn't even work. Right? And, and what do you do? It's like, well, is it just... You know what else is going on you don't know because it's not it's not as tightly controlled as you think it is um so that's why all this stuff if you look at but what you do is you publish it anyway oh yeah yeah you, you you publish you publish what you can yes right so the the problem is people have the idea that science is about they think it's still about getting truth and right now it's just it's a job it's a job um I and like this term professional research mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as opposed to science because that's really – that defines the situation. You and I and Robert out here in the field making novel observations about what we see people do and drawing new conclusions that aren't in the literature, mm -hmm. we are scientists in a much more true sense than these idiots in exercise science departments that are actually – getting papers published with ends of 11 about how a bench press <laughs> on a BOSU ball right. and a and a bench are really the same thing yeah so oh, yeah. so that's true but so so the thing is um their thing their, their, their things are never tested for real they're in such a contrived environment you're, so you're trying to be do a controlled environment right so you can tease out things well what are you actually doing you're trying to explain things this, science is never people have the idea that science is about truth and it's supposed to be but in in practice it's not anymore it's not about what's true um it's about publishing it's about grants it's about a job okay it's about a narrative it's about a bureaucracy tenure mm -hmm. it's about tenure it's about security but, but here's about, about all these things it, right right that are more job-like than science -like. but there's a big misperception people have about <clears throat> what science's role is. So a lot of people think that scientists go and they discover things and then we go build some things out, out in the field. But no, science is a lagging thing. It's not a leading thing. People try to figure out how to make stuff work. They, you get your guy in the gym, you do a certain amount of sets, he gets stronger, good. He does this and doesn't work. You keep adjusting. You're building it from actually being in practice. Yes. From people that are actually doing it. Yes. That actually see how it's working out in in real life. Now you may not know which aspects. You may need experience experiments. You know, maybe 50 years down the road, tease out one thing versus another. But right. the practice is what drives it. So in other words, right? Science essentially explains the phenomenology mm -hmm. after it's already out there. After it's after it exists. Yes. Right. And one of the, we get asked all the time, why don't you guys uh, why don't you guys do studies to prove what you do is right? And our response is, why do we need to prove in a journal article what we do is right? You already know it's right because you're doing it yourself. How does that help us? Why is that our job? You know, why does adding five pounds to your squat every workout three days a week make you stronger? You need a paper for that? Well, and, and the same thing with all this nutrition stuff. I mean, so, you know, you can talk about whatever you want to. You can talk about this blood test or that. But what actually works in practice and what doesn't work in practice? Yes. Right? So in practice, do you see uh, just a raft of very success, uh, successful veggies? Or do you see people that are not eating enough, that are eating largely nasty processed food, mm -hmm. that their fruits and vegetables are like, you know, grains and seed oils and not the pretty colorful vegetables, right? Um, do, do you see people actually succeeding or do you see people succeed more when they focus on getting enough protein, getting enough carbs, you know, getting enough calories exactly. or the converse when it's needed? So what do we do that's different than what this movie wants us to do? 
we eat a mixed diet for the most part. That's higher in pro animal protein. But we don't restrict entire food groups. We're not carnivore. We're not keto. We're not um, low fat. Don't get me started on that. So Ornish's ass was in that movie. Oh, God. What a yeah, it was kind of painful. I hadn't even heard of him for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I thought he yeah. had died or and, you know, just dissolved th- this is into a, a mass of deceit because I mean, that's where he's been all of his professional career. I mean, he's sitting there talking, of, calling it plant-based, but he controlled tightly for fat in his studies. Mm-hmm. It's like, so if yes. it's just plant-based, why are you so concerned with the fat content that you have to restrict below 10% of calories which is something most people can't adhere to. For more no, than, most people know. don't do well in that kind no, of diet. No, no, no. no there's no. no satiety there. It's less than unpleasant, ten. Unpleasant. It's torture. It's a let, sentence. Let's, not let, a. Let's talk about what that is. A, less than ten percent. So let's take an untrained person that probably needs two thousand calories. It's mm-hmm. like twenty grams of fat. Think about that. Twenty grams that's, of fat. That's not a lot of fat. No. Then you start training. It goes up to what thirty, <laughs> maybe forty. What, what's a pat of butter? Five grams, probably. So we're talking about four pats of butter a day. Uh-huh. Is the total fat intake on a ten percent? That's that's fascinating. That's well, fascinating. Dean wants it to be plant based, so margarine. Dean wants it uh, to be canola. Which we know is terrible. Yeah, canola exactly. oil. He canola wants oil. it to be mazola. He wants it to be corn oil. Yeah, soybean oil. But in the movie, but, he's but called God forbid, not butter or or. Delicious beef tallow or, mm-hmm. or delicious pork fat. No, 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 no. No, because that's poisonous. It's more that he's carved out a yeah, niche for himself. <coughs> he's made his career after pursuing this particular yes. tangent. Yes. And it's all bu- And he has to know it's bullshit. Oh, they all know it's bullshit. They all know, they it's, all bullshit. know it's bullshit. He's lying intentionally and has been for 30 years. Mm-hmm. It's just amazing. It's just absolutely well, they, amazing. They, they believe they're all bullshit. You, you're, you're forgetting. Well, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like OJ. Yeah. Believes that that woman just died one evening. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Have you read If I Did It? If I Did It. No. Or, or, no. Uh-huh. And I'm not going to. <laughs> if I Did uh, It. I've read Dean Ornish, that and that's a, close enough. Yeah. Very low fat diet, but now he's calling it plant based. Yes. I mean, it was mostly, you know, vegetarian, whatever the hell mm-hmm. that means. But, uh, the, what the variable he was controlling for was dietary fat. Mm-hmm. You know? So in other words, the choices had more to do with lower, keeping the fat low mm-hmm. than any source. Yeah. So it's interesting. You notice that was another thing in the movie. You notice at, at some point they act like the source doesn't matter. Or protein, the source doesn't matter. But they didn't elaborate at all. Well, th- what, they, what they said is they said, well, you know, if – that's a big – that's a big thing. A big if yeah. if you have your, your amino acid ratio is right, blah, 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 plant is just as good as meat. It's like, how do you, but how do well, you do that? Well, without pea protein, how do you do that without the products that Mr. Cameron's company provides? Well, without eating nine thousand calories. Yeah, a so day? all sorts of things can be done if you're extremely uh, rigorous about what you eat. So, in other words, if you're very obsessed and you're very, very, very into it. You can do all sorts of things, but that's a big if. And then, but see, but in in one context, it's like, well, they're the same, they're the same. And then all of a sudden, that just went away, right? Yeah. Well, I thought you said they were the same. Now you said they're not the same. That's they're what they do. The that's what these professional research people do. Well, it's prop. It's the nature of propaganda mm-hmm. as well. Well, mm-hmm. it's it's a magic trick. It's, what it is is it's it's wizardry, right? So what we're looking at is you make a statement that sounds good, and then you swap it out for something else while you're being distracted by the hand movement over here. On and on and on and on. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a magic yes. trick, right? Yes. Look at this. Look, look at the thing I want you to look at. Mm-hmm. It's cloudy. It's cloudy. It's cloudy. It's dirty. Cloudy. It's dirty. It's, dirty. Oh, Ugh, it's like filthy. you didn't. Cloudy, it's cloudy gross. plasma. That's detox. That's animal that's protein floating around in that. Oh in yeah, that cloudy plasma. It's gonna kill you. I, you know. Well, this, you know what? I, 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 I'll tell you. This, and what shows you too about that? What 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 highlights it? If you st- stop and just look at it again, uh, what highlights like how manipulated that that one scene was? Because that was just extraordinary. Oh, it was. It's it, like you get that's the, the you thing get the that science, stuck out get, so hard in that movie. Yeah, you is get. That, is the deceit. You get the scientist in. Science, science, science. Da, 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 da. And then we had no numbers. We had no numbers. no numbers. So it's like you don't have quantification about what's in that meal versus that meal versus that meal. No quantification. No quantification about what you pulled out of the tube. There was no triglyceride level. There was no cholesterol levels. Nothing. 
There was no quantification of what these people did before and after, is what was going on, anything merely, about it? There Nothing. is merely clear versus cloudy. Why anyone can understand that. Even a history major can understand that. Even an English major, a women's studies major can understand clear versus cloudy, and cloudy's always worse than clear. Of course. It's just, I, it's, what an enormously fucked up, deceitful well, thing they have done. Well, so it's, ba it's based on here. ideas that it's people know amazing. about, about it, dirty, clean, contaminated. Right. Awful. You know, That's, those are very deep kind of ideas. Yes. They're, right? They're dead. Black, clear white, water medieval. is better than cloudy water. Mm -hmm. Right? A clear day is better than a cloudy day. Right? Depends if you're roofing or not. On and on. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when I had to set the gym up this summer, I was a general contractor. Right. And I saw some parallels between that business and the professional research business. Really? <laughs> yeah. So, like, this guy, basically his job is he gets the money. Then he finds whatever cheap labor he can get to do the job, and anything that gets fucked up gets kind of like made to look pretty at the end. Then he sells his house or houses and makes his money and does it again. That's why the painter's so important. The painter makes the room look square when it's not. Oh, exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I would do. I knew a car <laughs> detailer one time that would yeah. that would mm -hmm. use spray paint mm -hmm. on the carpet. Yeah. In the car, he had a collection of cans of yeah. spray paint. Yeah. He would spray paint. Yeah stains to the same color as the rest of the carpet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fascinating, isn't it? What we'll do to make the money, right? So put, contextualize that to academia. Same thing. Same thing. <laughs> you got, a the, bunch, the, you got the cheapest labor you can get your hands on. It's the same thing. And as it's long the as the they can thing. make it look pretty, well, well they're, they're the next prodigy. Yeah. You know, I'd always like to say is, well, this right th here. This is, yeah. but th th here's the interesting part of this whole damn thing. There is a, a word that has been going around now for about oh, 10 years, mm -hmm. evidence-based, mm -hmm. an evidence-based like practice. Really, been yeah. that long? I learned it as a student. I, yeah. So it's an evidence-based practice. If what you're doing was in a peer-reviewed study, mm -hmm. evidence-based. What is a peer and, review? And, uh, Let's talk about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, peer review is an interesting thing. What are, I, they, what are they reviewing? You know, I don't have as much experience, personal experience with it as you do. I've had one. I, we submitted a paper a long time ago to the to the NSCA, mm -hmm. to the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research. No, to the to the SCJ, Strength and Conditioning Journal, mm -hmm. and it was peer reviewed, mm -hmm. and it was it was amazing. It was amazing what we we had to go through, and they wouldn't publish the paper. No, it's I a merely I merely made the observation that a, a fifty five year old housewife coming in off the street doesn't need to do undulating periodization for her program. And that he, she just needs to to start with the light weight and go up a little bit every time on exactly the same exercise. They didn't like that. They didn't like that. No. And, and what what was, uh, I remember clearly one of the comments from one of the reviewers was, if you don't understand how periodization applies to everyone, then you don't understand periodization. That's so reference. And that's, that's uh, I thought, well, you know, he's right. <laughs> I don't understand periodization. Oh, it's far too complicated. Because it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I don't understand it. And you're getting that. Well, from I've been making that are a living doing this shit. And people for, that are not doing it. I've been making a living during this shit, doing it myself. Yeah. Not people in a in an academic chair yeah, who have never not done a it ever. Thing. Right. I've been doing this for twenty five years at the time. Right. Taking something, taking making an assessment of a member who comes in off the street, and making them stronger by going up and wait a little bit every time, three days a week. And I don't, I don't need 
I already know it works. I don't need there to be a, a paper done on whether it works or not. I've been making a living doing it for 25 years. Yet, I'm told that that's not evidence-based hey, practice. Hey, hey, we, we're, in, we're the gatekeepers. Right. Who are you going to believe? Us, the gatekeepers, or, or lion your own eyes? lion eyes? Right. 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 Well, let me back up. What, what is a peer review? What are they reviewing? They're reviewing an account of what happened, a self-report, essentially, mm -hmm. right? A manuscript is a self-report. They are what they're actually doing is applying their opinions mm -hmm. about your experiment to your experiment. Their opinion that they didn't physically observe. They hadn't. They weren't there. All they're seeing is your data. But in the in 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 this particular case. Uh, I didn't have any data. I just said this is what happens, oh, and, and this it. is. And I, I made the observation that when you first start off, mm -hmm. uh, undulating periodization is absolutely not applicable, and that the longer you train, mm -hmm. the more applicable it becomes. That was the that was the basis mm -hmm. for writing practical programming for strength training. Now, you don't have to be particularly intelligent to understand the 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 principle of diminishing returns. Mm -hmm. But these, there are three reviewers here that rejected that idea. So I bitched about it, and the editor gave me another three reviewers, and they all said the same exact thing. You just, you know what you're doing. You, you obviously don't understand periodization if you don't think it applies in well, every situation. Well, you were challenging fundamental assumptions that they use every day. Yes, and so they didn't like that. That's like, they? well, that's our, that's, that's settled science now. <laughs> that's settled, settled, settled science. science. That's an oxymoron, guys. That's what that is. Right. The science has been settled yeah. in hell. <laughs> okay? The science is never settled. That's not what science is. Right. It's, consensus is not what science is. It's not right. science in climate, and it's not science in exercise, and it's not science in nutrition. Science is not about consensus. Well, that's because... People. Science is not about consensus. Science is about proof and falsification and asking questions and advancing knowledge, not stopping the advance of knowledge because of a supposed consensus about a conclusion that everybody likes. Okay, it's not science. Well, It's not science, Greta. It's not science. It wasn't, it wasn't science 600 years ago, and it's not science now. So there's a, there's a profound underlying thing that's just sitting there, right? Science is supposed to be about truth, but instead they want to make, you vote, do you vote on what's true? In its form, even though they'll, they'll say it's about these things, but fundamentally you have people that don't believe that something can be true or false. They think it's all voted on. They think something's right. They think if four out of five dentists agree that it must be right. Right, and you should just yeah. accept the expert's opinion on that. Yes, just that's how we've all been these guys can be as wrong. A society. All these guys can be wrong, right? You know, so someone has a credential, they're part of the club, the official narrative, and whatever what everyone says, right? You're supposed yeah. to go along with that. Now, there's a very strong conformist tendency. I mean, people tend to conform. The uh, educational system teaches you to conform. It teaches you to sit down, shut up. Do what we tell you to do, and you will pass. You even will if you pass. Can't, even if you can't read, you'll pass. That's the American educational system. It's it about happens all the time. It's about being, you know, it's about conforming. It's about being a good consumer. It's about doing what they say and accepting their authority over you. That's all there is to it. So if you have people that don't believe in truth, that's why, that's why the science is so bad fundamentally. You know, and that's before you get into the media, which, of course, is all about what? Uh, it's another level of gatekeeping. Right, because now they're going to tell you, well, this, that. They're going to shape. They're going to pick from here, pick from there. Mm -hmm. Talk to this guy, discredit that guy, and on we go. Mm -hmm. It's pretty yes. bad. Yes, it's uh, what we call hand and Peter <laughs> media and the establishment. Mm -hmm. They reinforce each other. Well, they are the media same thing. Media and the government, <laughs> media and the academic establishment, they all read they're all self-reinforcing entities. They're all part and of the same system. They are. In fact,
fact. So if, if you've got uh, nutrition science showcased in this film, and I don't really think you do, I don't even I don't even think this thing rises to the level of showcasing nutrition science. I, I don't I don't even think I don't think that there are ten professional nutritionists that would watch this film and say, you know, that was that was right. You know, the only you nutritionist know? in that it, movie was the one who disagreed with them. Really, the yeah. rest of them were the MDs, athletes. You know, former UFC fighters. Former UFC fighters. They had a movie diet, producers. They had a diet. The former yeah. governor of California. I think they had a dietitian from the USDA, I believe, and they asked her if beef causes cancer, and she said, "No, absolutely no association." And they put oh, the, yeah. the dramatic they, music in the background, well, right? Like, and yeah. then they just kicked the shit out of her. Yeah, that yeah. was the only yeah. well, nutrition was, expert in that yeah. movie. Yeah. And that's that's one of those things. It's, it's just like the meat. And, and the she beans. was brought in for comic relief. Basically. Exactly. Yeah. And right. how many how many times right. do you see it? Just like the meats and beans, they do this red meat and processed meat. And it's like if you look at the studies, it's always it's the processed meat has nothing to do with the red meat. No, the, you know? the color doesn't have the, the same magical, you know. No, right. well, yeah, yeah, it's not it's not just you know, the differences in the muscle yeah. tissue, yeah. 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 right? But so they it's like why do they hate red meat so much? It's it's almost a bizarre like obsession. Well, they're racist against red meat because it's red. Red, yeah, is racism. Well, what would, what would we call that? We got to come up with a different word. Uh, colorism. Colorism. There you go. White meat is good. But yeah. according to this movie, white meat's not good. Well, it's all bad. <coughs> so now it's no, meat. it's all bad because they don't want you to eat chicken. So it's meatism. 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 That they don't want you to eat mm. chicken in this movie. Remember the serum spin down thing? Oh, yeah. That was one of those, one of those burritos was a chicken, chicken burrito. Oh, yeah. And that's bad, too. Cloudy, cloudy syrup. Cloudy plasma from chicken as well. It's the it's the meat protein. It doesn't matter what kind of meat it is. If it's from an animal, it is bad. This is a vegan propaganda film. And I That's unfortunately fun. it's a very damn good one. You know? Yeah, but I mean normal people aren't gonna sit through. Let's talk about carbs for a minute. Thanks. Too boring. All right. so, uh, my first pass at this movie. My perception was, if these assholes are telling the truth and all they were eating was meat, and they're keto or damn near close to it, and these guys are trained, high-level athletes, and they switch to a plant-based diet, which is another word for higher-carb diet. They can't say the word carb because that's like, you know, it's dropping a racial slur these days. It's equivalent. Um, what typically happens when you feed somebody a bunch of carbs who's training and hasn't been eating a bunch of carbs? Their training improves. Yeah. But pretty fast. The training too. improves. Pretty fast too. Yes. Within like, like a few within days. Within a couple of days. Yeah. yeah. Within a couple of days. So I'm looking at that and I'm like, let's hypothetically say this guy was under eating carbs and just eating a bunch of meat and crap, you know? Fried chicken. Yeah. Then they're like, we're putting you on a plant based diet now. Mm -hmm. Now they're eating a lot of potatoes, rice, fruits and vegetables. Well shit, he feels better. It's astonishing. Short term, yeah, sure. Yeah, astonishing. Right, so that's one factor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then yeah, they they but again. They never, I wonder they didn't what happened to his anything. muscle glycogen. Yeah. What'd you say? Wonder what happened to his muscle glycogen? Well, maybe it increased. I think it, I think it maybe it went up. Maybe. Maybe his endurance improved. Mm -hmm. You know, at at high levels of intensity, his endurance improved. So that, so that was my first thought when I'm watching this. I'm like, well, you're stating the obvious. You eat a bunch of carbs, you're going to perform better. Mm -hmm. And if these guys were eating a bunch of meat. And junk carbs and not in high quantities. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're gonna feel like shit. You know, and they're gonna see a big jolt of energy acutely. Give it enough time, then training gets hard again. Yeah. The movie did an excellent job of masking the reality of a plant-based quote-unquote diet. the The movie presents colorful fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. as what we're supposed to be eating. Mm -hmm. The, the thing was a salad festival, <laughs> okay? It was the produce department at Whole Foods. It was radishes, which nobody eats. And, I like radishes. And, and green leafy vegetables and beautiful golden bell peppers. There was one scene that where he's picking the golden bell pepper up out of the, out of the produce department mm -hmm. and putting it in. <laughs> 
a bell pepper, <laughs> which has what thirty calories in the damn thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What did you say I, years ago? You can't I, eat seven thousand calories clean. And what do these guys need? Well, they they if they're going to get any protein, they're okay. going to have to have seven thousand calories. Yeah. So what what they leave out is the bread. What mm-hmm. they leave out is the rice. The what potatoes. they leave out is the potatoes. Corn. The corn. Mm-hmm. The the things made out of corn. Mm-hmm. All of the stuff that if you're going to eat enough calories to sustain athletic training, you're going to have to eat. Mm-hmm. The presentation here is that these people are eating salad all day. Mm-hmm. Right, they're eating what people think of when they say fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables. But not what actually gets eaten. But not what people actually eat. Right. Right. This is an aspect of the propaganda that was brilliant. It's brilliant. It's it's damned convincing. I found myself at the end of watching this movie wanting to go over here to uh, Jason's Deli and just get in the salad. (laughs) <laughs> See, salads are I good. I myself wanting a salad. Salads are good. Because salad's good, and I eat it all the well, time. But, my God, it's, it, the, the effectiveness of this movie cannot be understated. This is why it is so fucking dangerous well, well watered, see that's the thing always, because it's very persuasive you always t- take something where somebody it's easiest to take where somebody kind of has like a bias in them right fruits and vegetables are good and then you t- push them there and you leave out the fact that they're not thinking of the starchy ones that actually are going to form the base of the diet right you know the high carbs yeah. have to come from concentrated if carbs. you're going to get Just enough like calories for uh to you know stay alive you can't on. do it on a bowl of salad three oh. times a day <laughs> Well, and it's it's yeah. it's expensive. So, it, but this is another thing. If you look at it's, that is a very good point. If you look at, if you look at yeah. food patterns, nobody's talking about If you about look that at either. food patterns, what has happened over the last several decades and stuff, and what happens now is, you know, how long have we been eat, hearing eat more fruits and vegetables? And so, of course, being stupid Americans, just like we would do with alcohol consumption, we think, oh, we're doing it wrong over here. You know. Well, the fact is, it's actually worse in poorer countries because that shit's still expensive the, over there. This and what fruits and vegetables have been flat, but they're higher. Are they higher in the U.S.? Are they higher in Canada? Yeah, they're higher in the West, actually. Right. Well, I wanted a steak because Arnold said steak is for men. Well, and you always got to eat steak. <laughs> I mean, steak yeah. and a salad yeah. is fabulous. Not okay. men. He said man. I mean, it's, it's like all... here's this complete crazy person would do anything to fucking win, as you know. Yeah. And say anything. Do anything. Do or anything. <laughs> any. I mean, you don't get one. to be the governor of California <laughs> if yeah. you're not willing to say anything to do it. Yeah. Right. And. Okay. They. Uh, there was a, there was a thing in the in the movie about HCAs, about heterocyclic amines that cause cancer. Mm-hmm. They neglected to mention. I thought this was fascinating. The mitigating effects of vegetables mm-hmm. in a mixed diet Fiber. on the presence of HCAs that completely, essentially, completely account for a mitigating effect of anything the HCAs could do in terms of cancer. First off, the rates of cancer, the absolute rates versus the relative rates. Oh, it's one thing you see normally when you see your risk reported. Because this is how they this is how they spin yeah. this well, all this is, through the and, movie. And, and, this, and keep in mind, this is worse the more rare something is, okay, just because the way numbers work, right? So normally you'll see things reported as relative risk versus absolute risk. But what matters is absolute risk. Yes. Okay, so um, absolute risk would be, you know, there's a one in 100 chance I'm going to kick you in the knee <laughs> if you're sitting next to me, right? Right. You one can hundred. double that risk and there'd be a one in, there'd be a two in 100 chance. Right. So that's double risk, but it's it, the increase is only from 1% to 2%. Yeah. But it'll be reported as doubled as the relative risk between those two things. Right. And usually it's not appropriate to be talking about relative risk. Okay, so to really be talking about relative risk, those need to be really well-defined and and strongly supported um, problems. You need to be sure you need to be sure that the risk factor really is you sitting next to me. You know what I mean? Right. Um, if there's other things that could be impacting on that or affecting that risk, that may not be controlled out, then right. it's bad to be talking about the relative risk. The fact that he's poking you with a stick under the table, for example, might not be reported. But see, see I, I believe I remember in the movie they said that that there was a 17% increase 
in the cancer rate caused by HCAs when eating meat. Do you remember that number? Mm-hmm. I that seventeen percent somehow sticks out. Yeah, was it seventeen or I thought it was sixteen. It was it was teens. one of the yeah, teens yeah. increase in yeah. cancer rate. Yeah, yeah, and they omitted the cancer rate itself. Mm-hmm. Right, because that's what you do in propaganda. They didn't talk about cooking method either, because that's. HCAs are influenced and they by that. eliminate they completely did not mention the fact that if you eat vegetables with your meat you eliminate all but like one percent of that increased risk which ends up being no increase in risk in a real sense in a very real sense and once again we're not there aren't many people that only eat sausage all day okay there aren't a lot of people that do that all right. Now, there may be a few mm-hmm. that are just so in love with pepperoni that that's all they eat. Yeah, processed. You know, meat. processed meat mm-hmm. with sodium nitrates and DHA mm-hmm. and all this other shit. Nitrosamines. Nitrosamines and everything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and I think one of the original claims about all that stuff is that meat cooked on a fire mm-hmm. produces HCAs mm-hmm. and that these things are somehow going to kill everybody despite the fact that we're not all dead. Right. Right. This is, a, this is a, a, a prominent feature of propaganda, is advertising the increase in relative risk mm-hmm. without mentioning the absolute risk. Right. And it's, it's, a, it's a useful tool, and they have made good use of it in this propaganda film. Yeah, you see, you see that thing all the time. And people are just bad at assessing risk overall, especially if the outcome's really scary. So once you start talking about cancer, um, people's minds turn to mush. You start talking about strokes, people's mind turns to mush. Interestingly, they don't talk about how increasing fat in the diet can decrease uh, stroke risk, as has happened in Japan over decades. So, you know, they cherry pick what they put in in a very complex system, yeah. they don't re- report the actual rates, and they overweight things that are not uh, not controlled information anyway because they're self-reported. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, they don't even tell you specifically what these people are eating. You know, what are these people specifically yeah, eating in the that's movie? That's completely omitted Where's from the, the movie. So that's they what I'm know. saying. All they show Nothing, you are pictures of produce. It's qualitative Picture. not they're quantitative eating, they're eating this produce lots of bright green right. that's all they're so eating. they want it they want it to be science but then they don't put any quantitation in here mm-hmm. nothing about what they're eating before and after except in yeah. a very very general sense where they call something a meat-based diet that probably was actually still a plant-based diet because that's what most people eat people yeah. aren't going to eat a meat-based diet unless they're specifically intending to do so and there are certain groups that strongly promote this whether it's um Keto based, which doesn't have to be uh, meat based necessarily, but it typically is because typically it is cause because it's you're easier to do eliminating that carbs and carbs Carnivore. come from plants. Carnivores right? kind of gained popularity gain recently popularity. because it works pretty well for a lot of people. It works well for a lot of people doing. depending on their genetic background, how hard and what kind of training they're doing, what other factors they're trying to and, get rid of, whether it's seizures, whether it's whether autoimmune it's, diseases, uh, whether it's all ap- sorts of things, epilepsy. Has been has been shown to oh, yep. be positively affected. It's kind of hard to be diabetic on it too. Just right. so, so you know, it, it it's really hard is. to be it's a hardly, diabetic. It's on certainly your hard to have a glycid a, a glucose disorder on a carnivore diet. Very very hard. And and a lot of studies have demonstrated a very very positive relationship between a, a ketogenic diet and mm-hmm. a complete absence of Seizures for mm-hmm. epilepsy. Yeah. And, of course, that's not discussed. The, the rates of diabetes on this plant-based shit were not discussed Well, see, discussed that's the problem. The what's happened They're, What's happened with diabetes over the past 40, 50 years? It's skyrocketed. Obesity skyrocketed. And what has happened then? Decreased animal use, decreased animal proteins, decreased animal fats. And it's just like, guys, I think diabetes like, it's kind of a big problem yes. everyone being fat as hell is kind right. of a big problem yeah the epidemiology You're talking out of both sides of your mouth here the epidemiology of you guys ideas has kind of already been done we know what's been going on for the past 40 years 
since you told us that carbs were good and, and fat and animal products are bad. We know what's going on, and it hadn't been positive. No. Nope. Okay. People aren't going to the produce aisle. That's the thing, that fruits and vegetables has remained flat. And where the increases have come has been more grains, more refined sugars, mm -hmm. more of all the things that we already know are the worst things. But you know what? They're awfully convenient for the industrial production of food because more plant-based fat because those things are done right. on an industrial basis it's entirely manufactured but the self-reported nhanes data says that fats stabilized that there was no change in fat in the last 40 years <laughs> <laughs> so and <Haines. laughs> so this whole movie is you know the foundation of their argument is oh all these studies that you know, they don't go into, but let's, you know, we've already beat that to hell, but they're basing it on studies, which is professional research. Now, how come tech is not subject to a peer review? I mean, these cameras, these microphones, this right here, this phone, mm -hmm. all these things were developed. It's all science, right? Yeah. It works. Technology. It's changed the way well, it's based engineering. on science. I don't, yeah. I don't it's engineering. know. Yeah. yeah, there's some, some aspects yeah. of that, but it's based yeah. on people actually doing yeah. it and testing what works and adjusting what doesn't and you get a bug in what do you do you fix it yeah. right you yeah. give it mm -hmm. you think it's a great design you give it to people and they like and you move things around that's what these yeah. updates are all about yeah that's not, just, they don't peer ios this shit. updates yeah. every three or four yeah. months that come through are about bug fixes does it go through they're about peer, does it go through a peer review they're not about they're they don't they're not the result of peer review no they're the uh, they're all a population of, they're review the result of careful observations of the phenomenology what actually occurred, not what a peer review study concluded. Right. And here we are using it, all of it. And it works. It works fine. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Five sets of five across for intermediates works. But that's not Three science. sets of five across for, for novices works. And they're different because the phenomenology has taught us which one to use for who. There's no peer-reviewed studies on any of that. So if you're going to do a peer-reviewed study based, evidence-based exercise program, what are you going to end up doing? You're going to do 8 to 12 reps, 5 to 6 sets of knee extensions. Mm -hmm. Nines. Nines. <laughs> Let's do it the middle. It's just fascinating that scientism, scientism is the term the worship of the process instead of the use of the process as a tool. Was that a reasonable definition of scientism? Scientism is like Catholicism, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like Hinduism, mm -hmm. right? It, it's, it's basically faith-based. Yeah. We've seen a lot of this recently with 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 climate science we see a lot of this it's, faith based it's this acceptance of what the consensus of scientists all over the world say well it's it's not and even, that's not science it's, well it's, it, it's I, I would take it further i would say it's even just it's more emotionally based yeah you know mm -hmm. right just like catholicism and picking up um it, it, it's picking up whatever wherever the herd's moving and, and going in that yeah. direction. Rip. It, it's commercial, too. Mm -hmm. it's, and, it's proprietary and you're taught, in, a, you're in taught a commercial that sense. You don't know anything. You need to ask the experts. You need to ask the experts. And people with, who are the experts? People with degrees, doctors, mm -hmm. PhDs. Your government. Your MPs. government. Bureaucrats. People the that, people at the NIH. People that should be telling you what The people at the National Science Foundation. These people know. These people are experts. Experts know what's good for us. And if you do not rely on experts, then you are not fashionable. Rip, there was a comment from the haters on the last one we did. Yeah. And I went back and forth with this guy. I remember his name. You actually engaged oh, with yeah. a hater? Oh, yeah. Why would you have done that? It was fun. I got some. Okay, well, as long well, as you I, enjoyed it. Well, I got, a, I got a gem out of it. <laughs> okay. Jose okay. Bonilla, I remember his name, <laughs> says that bananas – are getting us fat and diabetic, and that he knows for a fact because his wife's a dietitian. Right. I can't even bananas remember the last time I've eaten a banana. It was the carb one that we put up, the <laughs> yeah. carb video, and he started. Bananas are making us fat. I was like, 
what expert would argue that fruits and vegetables and whole grains are bad for you? And then he's like, you eat bananas. I forgot the exact quote. You'll have to look mm-hmm. it up. But he basically was saying that bananas are bad for you. But I who eats bananas? I mean, I, I can't even. Bananas. I don't know. Yeah. Bananas make your, coat your teeth with this layer of. But that's not how we got banana. fat. You know, that's the whole you point. Know, yeah. But I, no, yeah. nobody eats bananas. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And at the same time, and at the same time, the official sources are saying eat fruits and vegetables. Oh, but they're good. Are, but I just, I don't like what they do to my teeth. Right. But it just never occurs to me to eat a banana. But then again, I don't eat a lot of carbs. Mm-hmm. I don't eat a lot of carbs. I don't eat a lot. I don't like sweet stuff. I don't eat a lot of carbs. And I certainly as hell don't eat a lot of bananas. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to eat fruit, I'll have apples or citrus or something like that. But it never occurs to me to buy bananas. I don't eat donuts either. Yeah. Bananas are the donuts of the produce <laughs> department. Hmm. Ah, you yeah. make a com- yeah. 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 Yeah, they're not very filling. No. Yeah. Yeah. no that's why that's why I never liked them. I don't like their yeah. shape. Yeah, I would agree with that. Or well, the uh, bananas are If I'm going to really eat a banana, I have to cut slide, it into Yeah. You can't just cut yeah. it into slice it, cut it into pieces cuz I'm just Hey, just <laughs> slice it into the sea. Yeah. I'm with you. It's hard. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, that's even hands. that's even wrong, really. <laughs> that is kind yeah, of rusty. <laughs> kind of weird shit are yeah. you thinking about? <laughs> yeah, that's 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 yeah. Well, that's po- this guy was saying that we became fat asses for eating bananas. He was trying to make I don't think that most argument. people. There's well, not that much banana consumption. I don't know what the yeah. consumption of bananas yeah. is. It's I don't not that think much. It's, I don't think it consists. It's definitely less less than donuts. The, the national yeah. diet. Yeah doesn't consist of a majority of bananas i gotta pull so, this comment up even despite the fact that his wife is a registered dietitian so she probably spells it with a c oh don't get me started so she is disqualified well let's let's just wrap up here we've bored these people enough uh i think this film the reason we're discussing the game changers the propaganda the veg and propaganda film is because it is very, very persuasive. It's a beautifully done movie. Somebody spent a hell of a bunch of money on this thing. It has been making the rounds. It's got a lot of attention, and it's very persuasive if you don't think. If you sit there and just let it soak in, you will come away thinking things that are not true. That's the point of it. It's specifically designed to make that occur, and it's 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 got the the propaganda mechanisms dialed in in a in a way that is astonishingly effective uh it is it is full of cherry picking lies persuasion techniques that descend from uh goebbels and lenny riefenstahl lenny riefenstahl look her up she was very important in the 40s, very, very important, the late 30s and 40s. And she developed the the propaganda film genre. And uh, these guys, these guys studied her, I promise you, they studied her. And this was, this is the, it's a beautiful film, but it's very dangerous. I think the most important thing here is to, you know, pay attention to, what's actually happening you know not get so wrapped up in the beautiful what actually yeah, works yeah, what actually instead works. of what you're being force yeah. fed with this film i mean the film had beautiful graphics and animation oh, okay. that's that's what i wanted to say so you left out the art yeah it was oh, it's, it's a yeah. beautiful film if you're having problems with your training what can you do in a practical sense without eating salad four or five times a day that <laughs> well, that improves your training well, I have this qualifier that I'm putting in my papers recently, and I, you saw it in the most recent one. Assuming normal physiology, middle of the bell curve, you're not mm-hmm. fucked up, you're not one of those weirdos that you know can eat a strange diet and function just fine, you're going to be on a mixed diet that, of course, is predominantly plant-based with animal products. They call it an omnivorous diet because it, ah. it rolls off the tongue nicely. So that's the word Omnivore. they're using. Omnivorous diet, like a human yeah. or a dog, or a dog, yeah. or a pig. I ain't feeding my dog kibble anymore. Good, I'm, good I'm, for you. Uh, I'm very happy I made this decision. 
But anyways, practically speaking, when somebody walks in the gym and starts training, I mean, any diet works the first two weeks because it's light. They're learning how to move. Mm -hmm. Then it gets hard, and they have to change things real quick because my experience is the self-report, you know, if they're being honest, you know, where there's still recall issues, but they'll tell you, yes, I'm eating shit. It's typically high fat, high carb, low in animal protein, low in protein in general. Mm -hmm. You know, that might be getting, you know, that three grams from the beer, you know, a couple grams from French fries, you know, and it adds up if they're eating mm -hmm. a bunch of shit. You know, you up the animal protein, up the complex carbs, throw the fruits and vegetables in there to, you know, get the vitamins, minerals, and, you know, satiety effects. And, uh, that tends to work really well. And then you scale the calories up as the training gets harder. That seems to work pretty well, too. Then eventually you become more advanced and it becomes more about the training than about the diet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, would you two agree with that? Right. Oh, yeah. 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 So, so essentially what you're saying is people come in, usually they're under eating protein mm -hmm. and they're overeating fat and probably. Carbs sugar. too, sugar. and they're probably sugar, since sugar, they're, sugar since yeah, because they're, they're, they're not eating three to four hundred carbs a day at baseline, right? Probably and since not. they're no. No. and no. since probably they're not. eating, and since they're under eating protein, they're probably um, they're eating a lot. Of the fat they're getting probably a lot of it is this industrial fat that mm -hmm. you don't really want. All these seed oils mm -hmm. that are negative for your health, and we know that you know fairly well. So, um, so you know, you up the protein, you know, you get the good carbs, get more vegetables in the diet and then when you start to have to scale back you know if the person's you know getting too much weight or whatever you're looking at you like to cut them down on fat mm -hmm. and you know hopefully that that's kind of normalized anyway a bit just because you're you're replacing uh some of this bad food you know i mean yeah. this processed food this packaged food this high sugar a lot of starch a lot of carbs mm -hmm. and a lot of like you know Soybean oil. Just a lot of sugar and, like you said, soybean oil, vegetable oil, whatever that actually is, Crisco. Mix, yeah. <laughs> but they're uh, oftentimes they're not over. They're not eating three ribeyes a day. I've had guys like that, right? You know, that right. were intentionally trying to follow a carnivore or ketogenic right. diet. But the average, you know, guy that comes in and just eats whatever is available, they're not eating a bunch of steak fat and whole milk no. fat and whole egg fat. They're eating right. a bunch of vegetable oil, cooking oil, and crap like that they're not eating jars of peanut butter so it's more you know? just just starting out you're going to be titrating up the you're training you're cleaning up the diet yeah. you're cleaning it yeah you start with cleaning up the diet and cleaning up the diet involves essentially what everyone knows is reasonable which is a lot of good whole foods mm -hmm. right yeah i mean i used to call it <laughs> when i was 19 me and my friend uh actual food yeah, we, we used to call this the triple s sodium saturated fat and sugar and by saturated fat i'm not referring to animal fat back then there was a lot more trans fat in the diet now they've banned that you know mm -hmm. whatever you know we know it has marginal amounts it's still in there but right anyways right. you know saturated fat sodium and sugar if you pull those out you know that's what i would define as cleaning up the diet because i find that those extreme flavors lead to more consumption of those right. and those are the the processed about, foods but saturated fat right. is well there's a qualifier <laughs> there yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. It, artificially saturated yeah. fat is what I yeah. think you're talking about. That's what about. I'm talking right, about. Right, right. Yeah. You're talking about hydrogenated yeah. soybean oil. Most people don't even drink whole milk or eat a bunch of eggs, you know? Right. And they're freaking out about this, but that's oh, not where the saturated fat is coming from. I know, when they talk from. about, like, right. okay, now yeah. you can have an egg now. I'm like, yeah. like who eats, like, one egg? I mean, yeah. like, when does that yeah. happen? Exactly. You go to, I had four this morning. You go to Sambo's and order an egg. But this is important, Rip. Back That's to <laughs> back to what you just said. That's disturbing. So, like, French fries, potato chips, right. Oreos, all that has saturated fat. That's where it's coming from, right. not from ribeye steaks. I mean, you can accumulate a lot of. It's it's plant know, based. But, yeah, <laughs> plant based, <laughs> artificially produced saturated. Hydrogenated right. cotton fat. Yeah, right. French and, fries. And they chips. do that because it's it saturated fat keeps mm -hmm. trans fat keeps mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it increases the shelf life of the products. To which it's added. Yeah. Right. So when I say saturated fat, that's what I'm referring to. I'm not thinking mm -hmm. of dairy and meat products. I'm thinking of you You're know, not thinking commercial. of butter, yeah. and, butter no. and cheese. So I think we need to hit that point because there is, a, there is a saturated fat problem, but it's not from the place these people like to discuss. You know, they like to jump all over right. you about whole milk and whole eggs, but that's not what the average person's over consuming. They're eating French right. fries and chips and Oreos and cookies. And if you replace and, those things with eggs... That's going to be. You probably cut your calories down. <laughs> yeah, an egg's sixty calories, and you know you get is it 
six grams of protein? Uh, we left out an important thing. It's not important to us, but we, we need to include it just for completeness. Comments from the, What is not really, uh, it's touched on tangentially in this film mm -hmm. a couple of times, is, for lack of a better word, the morality mm -hmm. of killing animals for food. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're making the the, the, the uh, Australian game warden makes the case <laughs> that he, you know, he decided to become a, a vegan after he started working to protect the animals, and he decided that if he was going to protect them, he couldn't eat them. <laughs> right? This is, you know, that's that's fine. I understand. I understand the the point of that and we haven't mentioned this before because the three of us don't think like that the three of us understand the the natural world as it is all right human beings have eaten animals since there have been human beings the first organized human activity was hunting mm -hmm. it wasn't grilling wheat <laughs> okay mm -hmm. uh the first organized human activity was hunting. And hunting is the other part of gathering that, that primitive people do. Hunter-gatherer societies hunt. They, still they do. kill animals. They eat them. We have been doing that since we've been humans. Now, if you don't want to participate in the death of an animal, you're going to have a lot of problems eating anything mm -hmm. because I don't know what you think happens in a wheat field when the combine runs. I don't know what you think happens anywhere plant food is harvested. But when that occurs, animals die. And you just have to, you just have to grow up and understand. One of, the, one of the basic facts of continued physical existence. Life, I'm sorry, life is predicated on death. It's predicated on the death of plants and it's predicated on the death of other animals. And that's an unavoidable fact that it, some of you squeamish people may not be able to wrap your head around that. And if that's, if that's the case, I understand, okay? But it would be wrong of us to, to ignore this as one of the reasons that people prefer this veganism thing, is they don't feel like it's, it's right to even interact with animals in terms of, like, honey. Vegans won't eat honey because it comes from animals, from the activity that animals engage in. <laughs> Actual vegans don't eat honey. Uh, every once in a while, a bee dies, and you'll find bees in honey. And I, I don't know what to tell you if this is your motivation for doing this. I understand that 14-year-old girls don't like the idea that an animal died someplace. But a realistic adult human understands this fundamental fact is that life is predicated on death. There's nothing you or I or anybody else can do about that. And I think that you need to, to philosophically wrap your head around this, and maybe it'll help you with a more practical approach to your diet than only eating vegetables. Because that's your human physiology. Despite what this propaganda film tells you, is not optimum without animal protein. And, you know, refute that. Go ahead. Thank you all for being here today. We're with Steph Bradford, Ph.D., and Robert Santana, registered dietitian, discussing the film The Game Changers. And we hope we've provided a, a, a perspective to this material that you haven't thought about before. We've certainly um, thought about it quite a bit, and I think we probably have 
made a contribution to this discussion, let us know. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Starting Strength Radio.